So let's talk about this week's episode as we talk about the, we're going to talk about top three rejection reasons, right, for international student visa. So as someone obviously who, you know, you're the one who's been the other side of the table, right. you know, including yeah. yourself, everybody that I talk to, you know, our student community, everybody has been this side. So you're the one who's been the other side. So let's talk about those three, like, let's say, I know there are many reasons, right? But let's just, you know, for the purpose of the video and the purpose of obviously talking and, and helping, let's talk about the top three reasons in your mind, what you think yeah. those are, and then we can kind of get into details and conversations about that. Okay, so the top three reasons, uh, what we're talking about here is the top three reasons for having your visa rejected. And Ashkan and I talked about this, and we want you to be positive. We want you to feel like this is something you can very much accomplish. So I'm going to give you top three ways in which you can really have a, the, your best chance of having your visa approved. So it's it's lack of these things is what leads to the other result. So we're going to follow the law of attraction, and we're going to talk about you realizing your dreams by actually getting the approval and then going on to study. So the first thing is preparation. You know, lack of preparation obviously is, is, is what we're trying to avoid here. And with preparation, it's not any different than, you know, preparation for any big thing in your life, preparation for a test, preparation for, you know, some kind of important family event. And as you go on, preparation is going to be one of the key deciding factors of your success as a student and, and on from there. So one of the things that will, you know, preparation, you want to practice, you want to study. What you're doing with one key visa is excellent pre preparation. Another thing you should be prepared to do is explain why you're doing what you're doing. When when I would interview students, and you're, you're right, Ashkan, I've done Many, ten, tens of thousands of interviews and you know so you see based on that much data you see exactly what works and what doesn't work if a student has no explanation why they're even trying to study something why they're going to the united states why they're going to this school why they're choosing to study this program that is likely someone who's not very prepared they're just kind of you know doing something they don't know quite know why all right and believe me it's not a criticism. When you're 18, it's perfectly okay to not be sure what you want to do. But what we're trying to do is prepare you to succeed. And if you want to succeed, it helps if you can talk about why you're doing what you're doing, why you want to go to this school, why you want to study this thing, this subject, uh, and so on, and what your plans might be afterwards. One, one or two other quick points on preparation. Avoid distractions and getting tips from people who are not experts who kind of decide that they weigh in. Look, I've spent a lot of time in and, you know, close with the culture of both Turkey and Iran. And as you know, as well as me, Ashkan, many people consider themselves experts on just about every subject. Absolutely. <laughs> Many. So, so you're talking to someone who had one visa interview and they had an experience and then another one maybe had one and they have a friend who had one. Uh, the, the, the expertise that we're providing you is from thousands and thousands of visa interviews. Yeah. So uh, try to avoid getting it, you know, that or the other thing is chat rooms where somebody gives you some kind of crazy story about this happened here or that happened there what we're doing is what you really need and so you can save yourself a lot of time by not getting distracted by some of those other things and then finally and i'm going to repeat this tip a couple times for each know what is in your application materials all right if the consular officer asks you uh where are you going to college and you don't know what city it's in you're you've got a big problem <laughs> that means you never looked at your application materials so knowing what's in your application materials is not just good for student visas it's the number one probably the number one problem that people have with all kinds of these interviews is they don't read and know what's in their own application materials so those preparation items are really important and Ashkan, you've done so much to help so many students and th this preparation that we're doing with them uh, through One Key Visa is excellent and we'll we'll continue to work on helping to prepare them as best we can. So the number one is preparation. And one of the things that I just stick in my mind what you said is getting help obviously from experts, right? And I get to hear this all the time. Our entire team hears this because my friend said this or my, you know, friend who or my family member who's in the US and went 10 years ago um, and now is a doctor 
has nothing to do with immigration, right? They said like, oh, you can't do this or you shouldn't do this. And so I, I think a lot of people are reading in the chat rooms, forums, you know, the groups that gets created. Unfortunately, the misinformation, and I'm not saying they're intentional. Some of them are completely unintentional because that's based on their own thinking of thinking that, hey, this is what caused me to get rejected when, which probably 99.9% .9 is not correct because something else caused you to get rejected. So you read those things and you go based on what somebody else said at one time or two time experience, and that could get you in trouble. So you're absolutely right. We deal with this all the time and you're 100% correct. Unfortunately, culturally, all of us, I mean, like in Turkey or in Iran, everybody, uh, a lot of people, and this is again, no disrespect, but it's just like how culturally we are. You know, everybody is a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, um, and an expert in everything, right? I always use this example, to be honest with you, and this is something that you touched on and reminded me of. And I always say, hey, you don't want someone who, you know, if someone comes to you, this is how we should say it, if someone comes to you and say, I've done, you know, I got a heart surgery. So now I can actually perform a heart surgery on you. Would you let them do a heart surgery? Probably not, right? right? right That's right. exactly what it is. Going to, you know, friends or family who have nothing to do with this field. And to me, it's unfortunate because this is the immigration field, particularly US, a lot of people, you know, get to take advantage of it. And, you know, by providing information and some of them could be true, some of them untrue, intentional, unintentional, and that could impact, unfortunately, the applicants. And so that's one of the things that we always want to try to obviously help out with, for sure. Right, right. And, and, and they want to help. Your family wants to help. Your friends want to help. Maybe you, you talk to them and they give you the advice. One thing you said, when, when you talk to your family or you talk to, you know, people who are experts, quote unquote, uh, based on their own experience, remember that in many cases, they're doing what they're what they did a generation ago yeah. or, you know, 10 years ago. And immigration law changes every day. So if you something worked 20 years ago. All right. So. You know, that's not what you should be relying upon. Oh, I just went and, you know, put my passport down. And the next thing I knew, I had a visa in my passport. Yeah, okay, maybe in 1976, but <laughs> not now. All right, so it, it is, absolutely. So again, I, I can't impress it enough. We, we're, we're doing this because we want to give you the information that's both accurate and up to date about how best to do these things. It's not anecdotal. This is not our opinion, yeah. all right? This is based on thousands of cases. So yes, so just to close out on that, preparation is gonna be something uh, essential for not just your visa interview, not just other immigration interviews, every important thing that you wanna accomplish in your life as a, as a student or a professional preparation. So preparation is the number one thing. Lack of preparation is the number one way or one of the top ways that you can get a, re a result, a, a, a bad result. So you wanna, you wanna definitely prepare.